right, all right. Well, I like all this. I like it a lot. Let's first, you got all this canary grass. Some people call it reed canary grass. Uh, it's not helping your mission at all. It's gonna lay down in the winter, not give any cover. It's no food value. It's too thick for, you know, baby quail or turkeys to get through. It's just kind of a nuisance, right? I wish they'd have never brought it over here. It was it was brought into this nation. Usually reed canary grass is in kind of moister areas usually, so they want you to use a, there's a aquatic formulations, which just means it doesn't spread in the water as much. It's not as big a pollutant, but there's an aquatic variety of a mazapir. Okay. I want you to use that at about 1.5%, and there's also an aquatic variety of a glyphosate, and mix that in there at 3%, and, and that will nuke it. And, and you may have to touch up a little bit year two or something, but that'll do a really good job. And we need to recover all that land that's in canary grass and so we can get something better in there. Yeah, okay. What I'd really like to do at some point is as close to the road as you can, plant a screen along the front. A lot of people use Egyptian wheat, but man, it falls over with the first snow or any heavy snow or ice or anything. But I, I tend to use a screen that has a really short, stout sorghum. It's like almost like a baseball bat at the bottom or something. And it only gets five feet tall, give or take. And then it's got some other varieties of sorghum and uh, taller grasses. And that shorter stuff is so stout, it kind of props up the other. Like I say, there's other screens. There are annuals. It's kind of a pain, but they will stand a lot. You can check them out. The least expensive I found is, I think it's like, 40 bucks an acre. I'm going from memory, but you know, an acre 10 feet wide is a doggone long stretch. Oh, yeah. And I, I think 40 bucks an acre is a good price. You can check out that out at greencoverseed.com. Okay. Greencoverseed.com. I, I may be wrong, maybe 42 or 38, but somewhere right in there. Okay. All right. So we've talked a little bit about screening. I see some hardwood bushes along your your line to the north there, but that's a friendly neighbor, so you're not too worried about that anyway. Yep. And if you do screen the front, you're gonna wanna turn those edges. Uh, you know, on your north and south line, you're gonna wanna turn that a little bit because, you know, they're driving down that road and until they get in front of your screen, they got a view of everything through there. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta turn the edge because, you know, if they're right in front of your house, they got to turn their neck 90 degrees to see in there anyway. Where I'm really worried about is they're down there about the T on that other road and coming up through there and they get up there where they can see pretty good. Well, you know, there's nothing screening that side. Yeah. So you need some wings on there. And, and no one likes planting every year. So what a lot of my, I just had a buddy of mine, we talked about this the other day in Arkansas. He's going to plant the screening blend I told you about. Not, you know, not too wide. It gets real thick, 10 feet or so, one drill width, whatever. Okay. And then plant and where he is, eastern red cedars, which is slow growing, but it makes a heck of a screen. If you do any pines, you you know from living up there, they, they self-prune. Yeah. So they're good to start with, and all of a sudden, boom, you're looking right through there, just like through a window. And, and the alders will lose their leaves. And, you know, it's a little bit of a shaded view, but you can kind of, you know, if I'm looking hard, I could probably pick out a, you know, if you don't plant it too thick, I can see a deer body through there and know there's a deer out there. Okay, so when I look at a property, I first start, if, even if I'm hunting or whatever, I'm looking at food, cover, and water. And water is almost always the most readily available. And I mean, water's a non-issue for you, right? You got swamps right. and rivers and ponds all around you. So I wouldn't, yeah. you know, I wouldn't spend any resources trying to add water in a strategic place. And, and then food, and in the summertime, food is a non-issue. One of these farmers has got some beans or alfalfa and probably multiple. And so it's kind of silly to think, I'm going to spend all this money on a two acre food plot and compete with my buddy over here who's got 700 acres of beans professionally managed. Right, right. So I wouldn't worry about summer food plots except keeping weeds at bay or attracting turkeys or something like that. But when all those crops are harvested, food is king. I would rather have really good food than that little old tree strip back there in the northwest corner. I, if it was me, I would focus on getting a screen 
And the screen is just for visual. You know, don't make it 50 yards wide or something. That's just taking up valuable real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you could get a screen along that north, not in the timber stand, obviously, but the, the north and west, a, a good screen, I would be very comfortable. And I'm sure you got some deer bedding in there, but we want them there during shooting daylight hours. You won't be able to see them. I would take that that northwest corner. Looks like what I've got drawn here is three plus minus acres. And I might even grow it in the summer. Uh, grow a blend of stuff that has some milo and some, you know, some grains in it. You can probably get away with this because there's so much food around you. And then I would oversee and let that mature. I'd plant it early as the soil temperature allows and really fast maturing stuff, which may not produce as many tons per acre or pounds per acre, but then let it start maturing in 30 days or a little bit more before your first expected frost date. Mm -hmm. I would overseed that because that's going to start yellowing up and maturing a little bit. I would overseed that with you know, your typical winter wheat and cereal rye and brassicas and stuff. So you got grains and greens. I want as much tonnage in there as I can get. Okay. I want as much tonnage because, you know, you don't want something that's, you know, three inches tall and four old nanny does get in there one cold night and wipe it out. Because me, you know, your house and your shop and all that's a, a bit of a screen I, 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 I have a food plot right behind my house, and I love looking out my window and seeing if there's a deer or turkey out there. You could get another three, I'm drawing quick here, I'll clean it up later, but three, three and a half acres, depending on how much yard you want. I don't like mowing grass myself. You got a big, beautiful yard in the front, I see. You know, I'm going to draw it, and then you, you know you need to change it, but, you know, you give yourself whatever it you know, 20, 30, 40 yard yard out back or bigger in a little circle behind the house. And you have yeah. wings that a food plot come down on the north and south of your your dwelling area there. But anyway, getting out of the three acres there, now you've got a bottleneck coming off your neighbor's land into the timber there. I left that little spot there. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do with that. And now you've got more food. And all of a sudden now you probably got more food, quality food, than anyone else in the neighborhood during hunting season. Mm -hmm. it, and, and, and I'm going to define that as once the crops are harvested. So, you know, start of hunting season, you probably still got some crops around you. But once those crops are harvested, the deer in the neighborhood want to travel all those other wood blocks we talked to in the swamp and all that and get to your place. Kind of wondering if we didn't take five or six acres there, you know, if, if you do in fact choose to make firewood out of some of those trees, and you kill the canary grass, which again is job one for me. Yeah. And come back about five acres there from the road back and make that a bedding area. Okay. It serves two purposes. It's going to be a helpful screen, right? Now you've got some width to it. They're not just looking over 10 feet of five foot tall grass. They're, they're looking quite a ways and that's going to diminish the view, right? And you could even leave some of those trees in there, but you're going to need to burn the switchgrass, which would probably really harm those white pines mm -hmm. uh, getting that hot. But you could let that naturally happen if you just want to plant the grass in between the trees. I'll leave that up to you. Your mama, mama might not like looking at some dead tree skeletons out there, but I think I would like to make that front part. I want to use all the land we can. I think I'd like to make that front part cover. And I think you'd be amazed in hunting season, not necessarily in the hot part of summer, but in hunting season, how many deer will bed right there and you won't even know it and then start scooting back to your food plots 30 minutes before dark. Mm -hmm. I want to take roughly a 40 yard line off your southern border and carry that switchgrass. And I would not plant 100% pure switchgrass because it gets so doggone thick that deer don't like to use it. I'm sure you've experienced that. I plant simple grass blends. Some people fancy them all up. I want them feeding where I can see them. I want them bedding where I don't, no one else can see. So for example, I tend to plant about 20% switch, 40% little blue and 40% big blue. 
And that makes it kind of a mosaic. And so, you know, if deer want to get out of wind or in that middle of that big switch, if they want that radiant sun, they're laying right next to the switch and in that little blue where the sun can get to them. And you're not planting little spots. You just throw it in there and it will, it will happen naturally, I promise. Okay. But that would be about an acre, and a, an acre and a half, two acres of land. And what we're doing is making a travel corridor going up to the big food plot behind your house. So they're not, and that way they'll get there much earlier than cutting across all the bare ground up through there. If you plant that front portion, if, if we develop cover, I don't care if it's trees. I mean, if you get really amb ambitious and you want to plant a bunch of apples and, you know, cold hardy things up through there, that's fine. If you want to make an orchard off the front, but you're attracting deer to right by the road, and I never like doing that. Mm -hmm. So I like to make bedding by the road. So you got a little bedding area up there, and then you could either make your orchard between the pond and going towards that bedding area. Orchards are a lot of work. Never kid yourself. In your area, there's going to be a lot of herbicide drift going on. Yeah. And fr yeah. fruit trees don't do well with herbicide drift. Uh, but I, I think I'm wondering here if you make a nice cover area up front. You got your mounds and whatnot out there. If we can't, because I mean, I'm just telling you, food is king. Yeah. You got cover up front. What if we come on the edge of that driveway and and we just get about a little two acre food plot between the pond, not a way up, not all the way to the pond, but you know, east of the pond, going back towards the cover block, and put a food plot right there. Now you can plant some different things and do some stuff. And you got a nice yard, and we're not gonna do anything between your house and the pond, leave that all family space and stuff like that. And now you've you've got some food stacking up now. And and you know that once those crops are harvested, there's got deer going to food. Yeah. And I could imagine several, several deer using your property, way more than what would use a normal 40, because you you now have the limited resource. You have the grocery store. I think what I want to do on that north side is have continue your native grass blend. You mean, I don't know if you're familiar with grass. It looks good. It's pleasant to look at. Critters are going to use it. I think I would carry that along your driveway to the north and then stop about where your food plot border is and keep that food plot area there. And, and that just gives deer another, they can go, and, and more importantly for you, so if you've got a north wind or south wind or, you know, northwest, southwest, now you can hunt either of those travel strips up through there without busting deer. Yeah. That's yeah. why I, I want to do it on either side. Okay. So I feel really good about all of that. I feel good about the food plots and the cover. And I feel really good about that. Let's get into your timber stand. So I think what I would do would be TSI, let's call this TSI, Timber Stand Improvement, that entire nice hardwood block you have. Okay. Because none of your neighbors are going to do that. Right. And all of a sudden, or I don't think they will, and all of a sudden your oaks are photosynthesizing more. And there's another advantage, of course, the big killer of acorns is the late frost. And you know, when it's really windy, we don't worry about frost because it's keeping the frost off the buds or the flowers or whatever. Uh, so if you open that up, the wind will go through there a little bit better and you might survive with that late frost because the late frost gets on the flowers of an oak and, and if it damages that flower, there's no acorn. So I'm all for doing TSI, timber stand improvement, removing the popple, removing the ash if there's a market for it and leaving the oaks don't let the logger say hey i you know oak prices are good this week let's take these out don't do that okay i, I like your plan the only thing we really haven't done much with is right where that northernmost finger of the hardwoods go there's that little area where it used to be a little tree farm or whatever's going on in there I'm I'm really okay the way because now we got a lot of food here. We could even plant the native grasses in there so they're going from the food plot behind your house to the food plot in the northwest corner or continue that food through there. Yeah, so you're going to have cover and you're going to have food and you're a smart guy. You can manage the hunting pressure and, you know, for you, you can 
now with the way we got this laid out, you can hunt the north or south side. You can go in the north or south side without alerting deer. So Brandon's got a a 40 acre track and, and it runs primarily east and west. So when you zoom out, it's really cool. Of course, this is gonna be a major travel corridor down through here. And there's a pretty good woodlot up here north of Brandon's property. And he mentioned, and I assumed that the deer were probably traveling down this fence line to get there. Little woodlot here with some hunting pressure. So deer in the area, uh, and he's kind of like an island out here a little bit, but you know, if I'm hungry, I'm gonna swim from one island to the next to get some groceries. And that's exactly what we're counting on. Cause in the summertime, there's no need to mess with summer food pots. He's in a sea of high production ag and they're growing corn, which deer don't use a lot in the summer except to bed in. But he's got alfalfa in the area. Of course, that's a great legume in the summer and beans, that's a great legume in the summer. And we get converting this front, which was just pretty much a wasteland in the cover. He's got to kill that canary grass and may or may not take out this was a, a tree planting that didn't go too well, so it's pretty gnarly looking right now. We get a block of cover up in here and cover along this edge and this edge so he could stalk up here, here either way. Food here, food here, and food here. Him and his family have a lot of options to hunt now on 40 acres. And when the acorns are on, deer are gonna hit these travel corridors and go to the acorns. So I really like Brandon's plan. I think this 40 is going to hunt much bigger than it measures out on a map. And I think it'll be very productive because deer need food, cover, water every day. And probably mid to late season, he's got the best food in the neighborhood. It's easy to see where the deer are going to go.